Hello everyone and welcome to day 8 of 12 days of BioPython where I will post one video per day related to bioinformatics topics using BioPython. I hope you will like it and please make sure to subscribe to support this initiative if you still haven't. In today's video we are gonna go through short introduction of motif objects in BioPython. So let's get started! So from one of my previous videos we already know what motifs are, but let's remind ourselves. So a sequence motif is a nucleotide or amino acid sequence pattern. Sequence motifs are formed by three-dimensional arrangements of amino acids which may not be adjacent. And BioPython provides a separate module bio.motif for, for accessing the functionalities of sequence motifs. So let's start by importing motifs from bio. And let's create a simple DNA motif. So we're going to create a list of sequences and we're going to store it in the instances variable. And we can create motif objects by calling motifs.create on the instances. And if we print it, we are going to see that we, we get all the sequences from our instances list. We can access all the instances from motif objects by calling dot instances attribute. This will give us back all the sequences from initial instances list. In one of my previous videos, we also learned how to create profile metrics or count metrics. Here, motifs objects have an inbuilt functionality which gives us exactly that. So the motifs object has dot counts attribute containing counts of each nucleotide at each position. And we can print this by calling print m.counts, which will give us count per position per nucleotide. So just to remind ourselves, what does it mean? That means that nucleotide A on the first position in the sequences, it appeared three times. Furthermore, we can access this count as a dictionary. So if we would like to get all the counts per position for nucleotide A, we can write, we can call m.counts and access the A nucleotide. This will give us the list of all the counts for nucleotide A. We can also directly access the columns of the counts metric. So for example, if we would like to check everything that was on the position 3, we can access it by calling m.counts column, meaning all rows, for the third position. This will give us per nucleotide the number of occurrences on the position 3. If you watched the video about profile and consensus metrics, you can also remember that we created consensus sequence out of this count matrix. And the motif object has also an associated consensus sequence. And this one, just to remind us ourselves, is defined as a sequence of letters along the position of the motif for which the largest value in the corresponding columns of the dot count dot count matrix is obtained. By saying m dot consensus we get the consensus sequence and this will give us back per position the nucleotide with the highest frequency of occurrences. So we see for the position 1 we get t, for position 2 we get a, for position 2 we get c, for position 3 we get g and for position 4 we get c. And this is exactly our consensus sequence. And similarly, we have the anti-consensus sequence, which corresponds to the smallest value in the columns of the count matrix. And we can print it by saying m.anti-consensus. It is also possible that we get some ambiguity in the definition of consensus and anti-consensus. This can occur if in some columns multiple nucleotides have the maximum or minimum count. For this case, we can call m.degenerate consensus, in which ambiguous nucleotides are used for positions where, the, where there are multiple nucleotides with high counts. So here, w and v follow the UPEC nucleotide ambiguity codes. So w is either a or t, and v is either a, c or g. If you would like to learn more about the motif objects in the BioPython, you can check the chapter you can check the chapter 14 of BioPython tutorial. That was it for day 8 of 12 days of BioPython. Join me again tomorrow for the new video. See you there. Bye bye.